I feel like a lot of people with their frustration, especially now, and we're probably guilty of it every now and then there's such like an immediate release of whether it be something toned down in the sense of you feel you were wronged in some way uh-huh. and you got this blue check mark and you're going to be like, Hey, at Delta <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker, I'm immediately handling this rather than doing something where it's obviously both have the, the, the potential for virality, but one has more of a creative release. If, if that's, I don't know. That's interesting. I, 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 I've sat, I've done this maybe three times my whole life, but I spent so much effort, money and time making a video recently that was about, that was shaming someone else, shaming a, a restaurant <laughs> and I didn't finish it and I didn't release it. Can you say who it was? Okay. I'll, I'll tell the story. Yes. And Sam Sheffer who's a friend and a great YouTuber is I, uh, forever upset at me for not make finishing this movie, <laughs> but I just, I don't want to do it. It's a small restaurant in New York city that I love. Oh, so and you're not even going after a chain. You're no, like, no. Going after well, that's why I pulled Greg back. Jablitsky. Look, if it <laughs> was, if it was like McDonald's, like gloves off. I think I've literally done that with Burger King gloves off, but no, oh, it's a small oh, poor Burger King, with their free promotion <laughs> yes. that you gave them. See, nobody cares if it's Burger King. This is a small restaurant in New York city that I love. And Candace and I went there and we got the waffle, which was $13. Now, $13 is insane for a waffle, but it's a small restaurant. They've got rent. It's New York City. And on the menu, it said with pure maple syrup, served with pure maple syrup. Now, motherfucker, I'm from New England. My cousin Curry, he taps his own trees. I know what it means to sugar a maple tree. I've made maple syrup before. I know the ins and outs of maple syrup. I can tell if it's fake or real maple syrup if it's in an unlabeled glass container from 15 feet away. I can tell by the viscosity. I can tell by the smell. I can tell by any of those factors if it is pure maple syrup or if it's not. And as they're walking over their $12 waffle that Candace and I were splitting for dessert, literally before it hit the table, I was like, that's not real syrup. And Candace is like, you're insane. We dumped out in the plate. I was like, it's not pouring. The viscosity is wrong. Like that thickness is completely wrong. It's not real maple syrup. And I asked the waitress, is this real maple syrup? And she's like, it's real. And I was like, cool. I go over to the manager. I'm like, quick question. Where do you get your maple syrup from? And he's like, I don't know. And I was like, you mind just showing me the container? And he's like, yeah, of course. And he shows me the container. The container says on it, real maple syrup. Now this is the mother container that they pour into the smaller containers. And I'm like, it's fucking bullshit. This is not real maple syrup. There is a vast conspiracy happening here. So what I did was I took that maple syrup and I poured it into a to-go coffee cup and I left with a sample of that syrup. I then ran extensive tests on this syrup, this syrup for quadruple redundancies, just to prove um, that it was indeed not real maple syrup. And it came back conclusive. It is not real maple syrup. It is 100% not real maple syrup. And then I wimped out and didn't release the video. <laughs> Wait, did you, you film the entire thing? Along Every the way? part of this process, Phil. That's, that's it's, it's both amazing, inspiring, and fucking a horrifying level of petty. I'm sorry. But, but also <laughs> okay, that's not, why I didn't really. But it also just, not because it's like technically, right? If you said it was on paper and you didn't necessarily say that it was a thing that you put on top of a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> that that doesn't change anyone's lives, but Changed whatever. My life, Phil. That I'm still upset about it. It sounds it sounds like you're the bad guy in a movie. <laughs> but they were the ones committing fraud. Exactly. So that's the thing, though, is it's technically a fraud. It's literally a fraud. So in any event, but also, so what did you end up not releasing it because you were like, I'm going to end this person's career? I, you know, I went three quarters why? of the way through it and, of the edit, and it was funny. And as funny as it was, as I'm explaining to you, like the humor wasn't lost. Like it was told with a sardonic irreverence that made it lighthearted. But in the end, like maybe it's just old man Casey and understanding the, what it means to have 11 million subscribers. But like, sure. I just felt insecure. For what it's worth, in the same vein, like I got completely fucked over by West Elm, which is a furniture company no one should ever shop at. Oh, I know I'm I'm, I'm throwing yeah. solid fists. Right hey, now. man, your your videos are so happy. Just release your poison here. <laughs> release my poison. <laughs> and That's... I did bust out the phone, like when they screwed yeah. me over for like the nineteenth time on me paying for in any event. And I didn't tweet the tweet, and I'm glad I didn't. And I I don't know. I just like. I've become much more cognizant of what it means. Well, it's also you, we were talking a little bit about this before we started filming. There's just, even if like there are certain things where our numbers can be similar there, I, I personally believe that there's something that takes what you say publicly to a different level. I could say something and there's not going to be an article about it. Right. But I feel like you could say something and it's like, blah, blah, blah. Casey Neistat goes after 
insert yeah, blank. And I feel like yeah, exactly. I feel like you're you end up being more of a, a target for that piece because your name carries more value outside of our our existing community. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that I, I'm just trying to be much more careful and cautious in how I do that. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that lesson the hard way about a dozen different times where I think like my audience was right when they got mad at me for the way that I would say something. Sure. Whether it was shitting on a brand that I felt like had wronged me or like, you know, like, like the 2018, 2016 presidential 2016, mm. what year are we in? What month is it? It's 2016. <laughs> Trump. It's been 20 years, Casey. <laughs> it has been 20 years. It's been 20 years. You know, Trump and Clinton, like I, 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 I meant every word I said in the video, mm. my, my, who I'm voting for a video, but no, like the audience was right. Like I said it completely wrong. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? Oh, your, your set's attacking us. I said it. I, That's the White House has us bugged, Casey. <laughs> I, I said it wrong. And like, I think that the audience is fair to criticize me, not for what I said, but for how I said it. Mm. So like, no, when I'm like, I'm about to tweet, or I think anybody who has a big social media following, when they're about to leverage that power um, with somebody else being the target of that, it, it comes with a great deal of cautiousness. And like a maple syrup thing sounds really stupid and petty and funny, which it is. But like, I just kept picturing like the poor manager or the guy who made the decision to just dump cheap syrup into the expensive jug and be like, this is for the best. Like I pictured him like getting fired or something like that. Like some crazy Someone old man guilt got to or... me and it was like, okay, I'm just, I just can't do it. I'm not going to do it. And like, this does dovetail with like cancel culture which sure. is an interesting thing for us to talk but about. But I feel like a lot of people have evolved on that. Even, even, I don't know. It's, it's rough because when we talk about people, right, there's, there's a real person on the end of that story. Mm. And mm. it's sometimes almost easier to, to talk about things or cover things. If you, if you just treat it as a story and there's not another human being on it, because it can kind of change your ability to be fair or convey the information because you're thinking of, well, what happens next, which is very much out of your hands because it doesn't matter your intent, right? It, it just matters what we've seen happen. And it's, it's this weird thing where it's like, uh, obviously we want things to change for the better, mm. right? But I don't know, the bullies become, or the bullied becomes the bullies, the anyone that can kind of I, don't know, I get messaged so many times every single day of people like wanting me to expose something and essentially yeah, ruin exactly. someone's life. Exactly. Um, and I don't, I don't know what I mean, to I, do with I, it. I remember when you've personally pursued very legitimate news stories, excuse me. And that's the, where you end it. <laughs> You're like, I have a heart attack and I fall. Um, <laughs> and the trepidation you had because you understand that very, very well. And mm. I think that that is, that is legitimate, but not, but often not respected. Thank you. A, a good example um, for me, not of times you've done it, but like I made a movie, this is years and years ago, a really long time ago, where I was at a restaurant and I came outside to get on my bicycle in New York City and my bike was locked because some jackass was locking his bike and accidentally locked it through my bike frame. And I was so angry. So I was like, well, I'm going to miss all my appointments. Like it screws up my whole night. Yeah. So I went back to my office and I got an angle grinder and I sawed in half his lock. And then I very carefully tied his lock up so it didn't look like it was cut in half. Sure. And then I left a note being like, bro, I wasn't trying to steal your bike or anything, but you locked my bike up. And I left him, I was like, here's my contact information. Sure. But I made a video about it because it was very satisfying. Yeah. It's like when somebody totally fucks you, what do you do? And it's like, take power into your own hands, get a huge high powered angle grinder and saw that lock in half. And the video was funny, but at the end of it was like this guy who like, he called me and he was like some hipster who lived in Brooklyn and he was super upset. And he was like, dude, I don't have any money for a new bike mm. lock. He was like, it was an accident. I didn't realize. And I still think like that guy was fucking careless and wrong. And he cost me my night Yeah, and I didn't harbor guilt over it, but it did illustrate exactly what you're saying, which is like, it's easy and it's often funny and it's so quick and satisfying sure. to shoot these shots. And I think in maturity and everything else, parenthood, you just start to realize that like when there's another person on the other end of it, um, there's an impact there that goes beyond just like yeah. what happens in the world of social media and what's funny and what is cute. 